Welcome back. I just finished cutting the dados in the side pieces for the taller set of bookcases and now we're ready to go over to the table saw and get set up to cut the rabbits to accommodate the nested back on these bookcase units. But before I do that, just a couple of notes. A number of people have asked for some more details about how the Festool router guide rail and guide stop are set up to cut dados. So I just made a short separate video and it's on my YouTube site. So be sure and click over there if you're interested in that. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that I'm using these uh, cutoffs off the ends of the shelves to test the fit of the dados as I go along. Uh, one little thing that you can do is just leave that in there as you're moving from cut to cut and it'll help keep the dados perfectly lined up. Even though you have everything clamped together, it's always nice to be sure. Well, let's head on over to the table saw and we'll get started. changed the saw stop from my general purpose blade over to a dado stack. And just as a side note, for what it's worth, I hear people sometimes say, well, changing back and forth from a regular blade to a dado stack on a saw stop is harder. Well, the reality is, is it is precisely exactly the same as changing back and forth on any other table saw with the exception of changing out the blade break assembly. And the blade break assembly changing from one to the other is 30 or 45 seconds. So it's really no more difficult to change over to a dado stack and a saw stop saw than any other saw. It's really quite easy. Actually, the entire changeover took me eight minutes. So after I got it changed over, just to show you the setup here, I've got the dado stack partially buried in a sacrificial fence and the part that's sticking out to make the rabbit is just a smidge under a half an inch and the reason for that is because I'm going to use this half inch maple faced plywood for the back and I know that the guy I'm making this for really didn't want any plywood but it's on the back um, and he'll probably never know unless he watches this video. Uh-oh. Well, anyway, so that's what I'm going to use. And the way I set up the dado stack was to make a one quarter inch deep cut and the depth of it, like I said, just a smidge under a half an inch. Now, one point here is that when you test this, if you're going to be off at all, be off air so that the hardwood side is just a smidge proud of the plywood. And the reason for that is, is that if the plywood was proud of the hardwood side, you'd never be able to get it flush. And if the hardwood side is a little bit proud, you can always just hit that with a plant, one or two swipes, and you're perfectly flush again. So that's the basic setup. I also, um, took my side pieces and I used chalk to mark the edge that's going to get the rabbit. Wouldn't want to make a mistake at this point. Always double and triple check for my chalk marks to make sure I'm getting the right spot.
Okay, that looks pretty good. Time to cut the short ones now. They're going to be easier. One interesting thing about the saw stop saw, if you, uh, if you haven't gotten one yet, the dust collection is uh, so tight and closed in the cabinet that when you've got a sacrificial fence and a setup like this, there's actually a vacuum on the workpiece that can kind of make it hard to slide a little bit, um, depending on your dust collector, I guess. Looks good. Inevitably, somebody is going to ask, why did you go to the trouble to set up the dado stack and the table saw just to cut those four rabbits? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, I wanted to be able to shove the piece up tight to the fence and get absolute accuracy without a lot of fiddling around measuring and stuff with the guide rail. But the router and guide rail would have worked just fine. The other reason that I wanted to do it is because there are a lot of people who just prefer to cut dados and rabbits with a dado stack and their table saw, and I just wanted to give you an idea of the setup. It only takes a few minutes to change back and forth, so it's no big deal for me. I'm going to change this back now to my general purpose blade, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to give some thought as to where I'm going to set up to mock assemble these big bookcases. My shop's a little too small for this, but I'll figure something out. I need to mock assemble these so that I can get a final and absolute dimension for the back pieces. Then I can cut those out and we'll be ready to start assembling. Well, that just didn't work at all. I uh, tell you what I tried to do. I tried to build a really large work surface so that I could mock assemble these bookcase cabinets face down as if the entire cabinet was laying on its face. And to do that, I leveled the outfeed table with my table saw. I normally keep the outfeed table about a sixteenth of an inch below the table saw just so stuff feeds out of the table saw and doesn't catch. So I brought that up level, then I took a 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood and put that on top, but of course that wasn't wide enough uh, because the shelving units are 60 inches wide. So I took another sheet and I ripped off a piece to go from here to here and fill up the space and make it a little over 60 inches wide. So I got that all clamped together, leveled up and everything, and I went to try to mock assemble the first unit. And what I quickly realized was I just didn't have enough hands and arms to be able to get that done. There was just no way I could hold all the pieces and get clamps on it and everything. It wasn't working out. So then I decided what I would do is I would just take one of the side pieces, lay it down here flat, and stand each shelf up in it vertically. Once I got each shelf in, then I could lift the other side up on top and nest it into the dados and then be able to clamp everything together. The problem was, as I laid this down, I stood up the first shelf and I was hitting the ceiling. So at that point, I took a break, had a cup of coffee, and I had to think about this. And then I remembered a project I did a few years ago called I-Beam Work Support. You can still see the uh, video on my YouTube channel. Part of that project was to build some support bases for the I-beams. And the support bases are basically cubes of different dimensions so that depending on the orientation in which you set those on the floor, it changes the working height. 
And in a couple of the orientations, the working height is lower than my outfeed table and table saw. So I brought those downstairs, I set them up, I took this piece of plywood that I ripped, put that across there, I leveled everything up, got it all clamped down, and now I'm going to see if I can assemble these shelves on those work support bases. Let's go take a look and let's see if that works. This is my third attempt to dry assemble this large set of bookcases in my shop. And what I've done is I've taken the bases from the I-Beam work support project. I've laid a piece of three quarter inch uh, plywood on top of that and leveled everything up. And then I've put one side down and clamped it into place. And the idea is to stand the shelves up in their respective dados and then put the other side on top and clamp everything together. And I should be able to get a dimension for the back. Now to assist in that, I've got these corner braces. They're really used for squaring up boxes and things, but I think they'll really help out here. I've clamped them down with the edge right next to the dado edge so that when I put the shelf in, I can clamp the uh, square to the shelf and keep it from rocking or worse falling out, hopefully. So I'm ready to give this a shot. Let's take a look. Okay, now one thing that's important to do is to make sure that whatever edge you're trying to get flush is flush before get too far and I want the front of the shelf to be exactly flush with the front of the side piece. You may notice that I have these shelves numbered and the corresponding dado numbered because I have certain positions that I want the shelves to wind up in for aesthetic reasons for just a minute. Okay, I've got the clamp on but not fully tight. And now what I want to do is perfect. Flush that up there. ready for the next one. This might work if I'm tall enough. wasn't too bad at all. Now I can double check this for square by measuring diagonal to diagonal, uh, corner to corner, and once I confirm that it's perfectly square, I can measure for the back pieces. It didn't work out too bad at all. I wish I was about two inches taller. The bookcase mock-up assembly is indeed square. Now I've added a couple extra clamps just to make sure it stays there overnight because I'm not going to be able to get back on this project again until tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm going to rough cut the back pieces to size. Now the dimensions that I need are 78 inches for the height of the bookcase 
and 59 inches wide. And of course, I don't have any plywood that's 59 inches wide, and it's just as well because what I'd prefer to do is do it in two pieces. And I want to do it in two pieces with a rabbit on one piece and a rabbit on the other piece so the back pieces overlap and we'll have some room for expansion and contraction in the future. So 59 inches, half of that is 29 and a half, and I'd like a three quarter inch rabbit in both pieces to do the overlap. So I'm going to be cutting these 30 and a quarter inches wide. First thing that I want to do is I want to reduce this half inch maple plywood to length. I'm going to cut about eight inches off this end to square this up. And the reason is, is there were a couple of minor little imperfections in the finish on this end and a couple on the other end. So I'm going to have to take some off both ends to get perfect looking pieces. So I'm taking about eight inches off this end. Then I'm going to spin the two pieces around, still clamped together, and I'm going to bring it to exact length by cutting off the other end. Once they're to exact length, then I'm going to rip them down to a 30 and a quarter inch width for two pieces, and then we'll cut the rabbits. So let's get going. Okay, now I'm going to cut these two pieces of plywood to their final length. Okay, now just like the length, or the height as it were, when I cut these to width, I'm going to take some off both sides. Again, it's just to absolutely assure that everything is square and to eliminate some spots that are a little bit troublesome that I just didn't like the looks of. But I've got this set. I'm ready to go. And by using that spring clamp, it's easy to pull this out. Okay. In case you're wondering, I actually have these two pieces of plywood turned show face to show face, hopefully eliminating any splintering because the two show faces are on the inside. And there we go, time to cut some rabbits. After cutting the two pieces for the back to size, I oriented them to get the look that I was looking for that you'll see when you look into the front of the bookcase. Then I marked the location for the rabbits. And the rabbit on this piece will be on the show side on the top. And on this piece, it'll be on the underside. I'll need to flip that piece over and uh, route that rabbit in there. The setup for cutting this rabbit is the same as the dados and the rabbits before, with the exception of the shoe or the foot. Um, on the rabbits that I cut before, I put a same size sliding block under here and just slid it along with the uh, router as I cut the workpiece. But I had this piece of three quarter inch plywood on top of my outfeed table and table saw. So I just went ahead and dropped the foot down to the level of that plywood and it'll just ride right along. So we're ready to cut.
There is a little bit of an edge left here, and there's a reason for that. I used a three-quarter inch uh, router bit, but I wanted to make the uh, width of this rabbit just a little bit more than three-quarters of an inch so that when I'm fitting the back pieces together, there's a little room, little wiggle room there. So it's just a tiny little piece. All I've got to do is just take a chisel and that'll pair right off. We'll be good to go. Okay, I've got the two back pieces now inserted into the cabinet. I've got a long piece of very straight maple here clamped across to hold the back pieces up flush to the shelves and I've got it clamped around the perimeter. Now what I'm going to do is go around on the other side and use a pencil and mark where the shelves contact the back so I'll know exactly where to cut the dados. Now, this is the best possible way to check for square and when I first put the back in I found out that I was a little off and it turned out it wasn't because it was out of square. There was, this is the side down here at the bottom and this is of course the rabbit that runs across the bottom and about the first three inches or so of that rabbit we're not quite the right depth. I must have let that slip a little bit. Remember we did that rabbit on the table saw and I didn't use any hold downs. That probably would have fixed that. But it was just not quite deep enough. So all I did was just use a paring chisel and I just chiseled it out until I got it perfectly flat and it turns out that everything is absolutely square. So we're ready to mark for our dados. So I'm going to try to show you this, but it's a little tight and a little dark back there, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm on the other side of these bookshelves now, and the backs are pushed up as best I can flush with these shelves, and I'm just taking a very sharp pencil and making a line to mark the location of where I need to cut the dados. And I'm doing it on both sides, just so I'm sure to cut these in exactly the right spot. And this is really critical. Obviously, the placement has to be right, the depth has to be right. It's very important that these dados come into play on this back because the dados in the back are gonna offer a lot of sag resistance on these big, long shelves. So that's all there is to it. Well, the back pieces are done. That was an awful lot of dado cutting. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm kind of ankle deep in wood chips. It's time to sweep up. It's also time to bring this installment to a close because we're frankly about out of time. But be sure and come back for the next video because we're going to glue up this big giant set of bookshelves. And I'm going to do it in a little bit of an unorthodox way. I think you'll be interested to see how I do that. Anyway, look forward to seeing you and thank you so much for watching this video.